Hello, I am acting teacher Michael Bean, and this is your lesson for myfreeactingclass.com today for shoof, Tuesday, April of the 13th. Uh, today we are doing self tape review and talking about camera technique. You know, so uh, the Eve is all right if I uh, use your video, you know, at, to talk about some of the uh, technical things. Okay, great. So I will use mine and I will use Eve's. So uh, just a very quick reminder. This is the frame, what the camera sees. The frame for an audition typically uh, is medium close up, you know, so just from your armpits, you know, to the top of your head. So not this, not that, not one of these. Uh, you are in the middle of your screen. You don't have a whole bunch of room over your head. Uh, and uh, the, uh, so that's, fr that's frame. Uh, one of the things that you're doing, that, you, uh, that I recommend doing, uh, and I talked about this a bunch in the last Tuesday's lesson, is that uh, if you are standing in particular, that you set marks for yourself. You set a, uh, basically put, put a book or a t-shirt or something on the floor where your feet are supposed to be so that you can like move around, but know that you are close to where the camera can see you best. So frame, mark. Uh, the one more thing about framing, I often see actors do try and do their scenes like this. This is not wrong. It's just that we do not need this part of my body. What we need is this part of my body to convey feeling to the camera. So unless you have a scene with a lot of physical action, I recommend setting it up in a medium close-up. This is what you see in TV shows most of the time. Uh, eye light. Uh, so you want to make sure that your light is behind your device, pointing at your eyeballs. If I turn mine off, you will see that I look all dead inside. I'm very serious. Now I'm like dead inside. Uh, and as soon as I've got light in my eyes, whether it's light from the window that's in front of me, or it doesn't have to be fancy ring light like I got, um, it's not even that fancy, I, then I would start to look like I am more alive and thus more interesting and feeling more stuff. Uh, your eye line, right now my eye line is straight into the middle because I'm looking at you. You're watching this video. But if I was acting, I would want to make uh, get out of full screen on Zoom or whatever I'm using, drag you all the way over to the side, and then I can just look at Eve over there, and it looks like I'm just looking at a real person and talking to a real person. Now, if I forget, and I put Eve right here in the middle, and I'm like, hey, Eve, I want this to look like a TV show where I'm talking to a real person. It's actually going to look like you're looking right into the eyeballs of the people watching. You don't want to do that. So that's eye line, the line between your eyes and what you're looking at. Uh, so that's some of the technical language for you. So I'll just uh, flash you uh, Eve's video here. So this is Eve. You can see she's got a nice neutral wall behind her. Obviously, if she was taping it, we would just like scooch the camera in closer to her a little bit. So she would be in a medium close up. And otherwise, she's basically ready to go. Um, she's doing exactly what I'm doing, which is just using a neutral wall at her house. So the one thing that I didn't talk about with my setup you know, is uh, your background. You want your background to be as non-distracting as possible because if I've got this set up here, then no matter how interesting I am, you are going to end up looking over my shoulder. You're going to be like, hey, cool, a candle and a light, and I wonder what's written on that thing. You know, so the, uh, the best bet uh, at this point is like a neutral wall somewhere in your house and uh, with either a, with a window across from it. And if you don't have that window, take a desk lamp, point it at your face, you know, spend the, you know, $30 for an inexpensive ring light pointed at your face, you know, get some light in your eyeballs. So there you go. So many self tapes today. Thank you. Thank you to the actors who submitted because we've got a whole bunch of cool stuff to look at. So here we go. Uh, we will start with, um, Let's see, what should we start with? Got us. Uh, let's start with uh, Murtaza's self tape. So, uh, Murtaza, because it's the first self tape that Murtaza has sent, and I checked in with him and I said, Murtaza, what kind of feedback do you want? Do you want like all sort of really gentle, like here's the good stuff, you know, just do more of that kind of feedback, or do you want the like, uh, constructive criticism, you know, critique, you know, uh, or do you want the like full on, like, this is what casting is going to think when they look at this critique. And he's like, kind of number two and number three. I mean, like, give me the constructive criticism and some of what casting is going to think. So you know, thank you for being brave and asking for the kind of feedback you want, which I appreciate it. Here we go. Uh, the And I will try and get in the habit of asking any of you who are actually, you know, here uh, for the lesson, you know, if you've got a self-tape under review, which ones of those, uh, which uh, type of feedback uh, in that respect that you want, if you want the uh, 
constructive criticism version or. Here we go. So Murtaza self-tape. So right away, uh, we're here at the, uh, the start of the tape. Uh, we can see that a neutral backdrop, right? So neutral wall behind him, check. Uh, lighting is terrible. You know, the, uh, he's got a real, the brightest spot on his face is here on the side. So he's, he's being lit, you know, from the side. Uh, he's also wearing glasses that are reflecting his computer monitor. You know, so uh, the, is he in a medium close up? Yeah, he is, right? So, he's, uh, so he's, there's some things about the setup uh, that are uh, working for him. You know, namely the uh, medium close-up, you know, head to the just below the armpits, never wear something with letters on it. Because again, we are going to end up being distracted and looking at it. Um, now, uh, Murtaza, I see, uh, you see this uh, logo here in the corner, um, self-tape app. I'm not familiar with the self-tape app, but again, anything that uh, draws our focus from your eyeballs is a bad idea. So if you're not familiar with this Murtaza, there's a program called Handbrake. Uh, spelled just like it. No, is it H A N D B R A K E? Handbrake. It's a free program, and if you record a scene on your phone and then you want to edit it together uh, or like trim it down, you can use Handbrake to do it. So if you are not familiar with the editor, you know, on your computer, you can do that. Honestly, you can most cell phones you can edit the video clip like directly on your phone before doing anything with it. So uh, my recommendation is edit it, you know, on your phone, you know, uh, or, uh, and then uh, use handbrake to make the file small enough to send to people. That's the like phone only don't have any computer skills version. And if you have even just like the most modest computer skills, you know, to, uh, and this is not for Murtaza particularly, but just for anybody, you know, record it however you want, throw it on your computer, drop it in iMovie or Windows Movie Maker or something. You know, and uh, and export it you know, so that it's small enough that you can actually send it to people without it being like hundreds and hundreds of megabytes. Um, so the lighting is the huge issue here, uh, and the reflection in the glasses. The only way, probably, to uh, of completely avoid the reflection in the glasses is going to be to um, get a dummy pair of glasses and knock the lenses out. You know, which uh, I have a couple of options of those that because I wear glasses in my regular life and I have headshots with them. And so I just got a pair of $2 glasses and I took a hammer and I knocked the lenses out. And I wear these when I'm auditioning for doctor and nobody ever knows. So uh, there's a piece of tangible advice for you, Murtaza. Uh, so the casting feedback you know, on this is that like they're gonna watch four seconds of this and be like, oh, this guy has no idea what he's doing you know, and move on. You know, the, right, that's the sort of like harsh assessment, you know, or like casting assessment. Uh, something I was talking to Cassie about before the lesson got started you know, is that right now, one of the things uh, that is sort of going along with the transition to, for casting to self tapes is that they can take a risk on seeing somebody they don't know. You know because if they get 50 self tapes, that's not like that each one takes 10 minutes because they literally can watch the first 30 seconds if they want to. They're like, oh, I watched the first 30 seconds and it just didn't grab me. Um, and, uh, and something that I found myself saying to Cassie, that's probably worth saying here, is that that's actually really good for everybody who's like getting established as an actor because really the ones that people are gonna remember, that casting is gonna remember, are the ones that really stand out for them. You know, and I, of course, the actor's like, oh, my self-tape was boring. They're going to remember that and hate me. And really, really, was it so boring that when they've watched 500 self-tapes in a day, then 85% of those were boring, that yours is going to be extra memorable for its boringness? Like, I really, really don't think so. But so as long as you don't, like, say something horribly mean to them or hurt yourself or just, like, do something that's, like, memorable in, like, the negative direction, not boring, but just, like, actively awful, where you're like, I think I'll do a backflip and a Russian accent, just, like, out of nowhere, like, yes, that would be memorable in the wrong way. Uh, but aside from that, like, if your self tape ends up being boring, they're going to watch 30 seconds, they're literally going to forget it exists. Like, the... I'm not saying always, but that's really the odds you're looking at now. So please like set yourself at ease. Uh, as long as they keep asking you to do self tapes, you're probably doing everything right. You know, whether or not you, you book them because they're seeing more self tapes these days. Uh, so then let's just watch a little clip of Murtaza's acting. Seems like I wants to fit us into some sort of ABC path. I don't know about you, but 
growing up and living a life to pay my bill is a real shitty way to live. Yeah, and so uh, it looks like, and this may not be the case, but it looks like, Murtaza, that you were just reading this text directly off of your screen. You know, and uh, if I couldn't see the reflection of your screen in your glasses, then you might be able to get away with that a little more, but what's happening is it's flattening you out. So right now, everything in the scene is coming off and I watched, okay, I'll confess, I watched the first maybe like minute and then I started fast forwarding and I was like, yep, it still sounds the same. Yep, it still sounds the same. Yep, it still sounds the same. Oh, it sounds the same all the way in. It's like a four and a half minute scene. And the whole scene is in this kind of like whispery voice you know, where it's dropped into a whisper and there's just not a lot of variation. And there's not a lot of movement. You know? And <clears throat> the in terms of naturalism, like dropping the volume is great if you're having trouble making it sound naturalistic. I think it's a great exercise. Uh, but in terms of telling the story, I would say give yourself a shorter scene next time. Give yourself 30 seconds, a minute, something that you can memorize and play with, you know, and then try and bring as much you to it. Because like Murtaza, I've taught in person before. It was a couple of years ago. But like he's a dynamic and interesting dude, you know, and that's not showing up in this tape. You know, uh, like I'm not, this tape is not nearly as interesting as Murtaza is as a person, you know, and so Murtaza, I will give you that feedback, which hopefully is on the lines of constructive criticism, uh, while also having just a little bit of casting, you know, direct assessment. Uh, the, okay, uh, let's jump into our next self tape. Uh, this one is uh, from uh, Duke. Uh, now, uh, this is actually an audition coaching session. Uh, for, uh, that I did with Duke uh, just very recently, and I asked him if I could share it here, yeah, and he said yes, that would be fine. Uh, he's uh, got, just got a sheet behind him, you know, but uh, I don't know if he stretched it out or ironed it, but either way, when he's come in for the My Free Acting class lessons, it's been like all wrinkly, and that's, uh, I've pointed out recently that that's really an issue for a lot of casting directors, so he, he figured it out, great. You know, he's auditioning for a doctor, head of a hospital, kind of a jerk. I'm going to show you his first take, and then I'm going to fast forward and show you his last take in this scene. Dr. Gordon! What is it, Linda? You need to evacuate the staff immediately. What? Right, so uh, medium close-up. Yep, he's probably like he's a little tighter than a medium close-up. You, know, uh, you might want to you know, back out the frame just a little bit. Uh, the, but he's, has he got a good eye light? Yes. Is his eye line close to camera? Yes. Is the background neutral and non-distracting? Yes. Sure, there's a shadow back here, but like they're not expecting perfect tapes these days. You know, like, the, and is it really worth several hundred dollars worth of studio lights plus the clutter that that's going to be put in your apartment just so that you don't have a shadow in the background? I mean, I personally don't think so in terms of my setup at home. I'm sure there are teachers or coaches who disagree with me, but the, uh, it is, even if it is makes your tapes better, it is an incremental adjustment, and I think that energy is better put into your acting. Here we go. We have two more who died in the waiting room, a healthy mother and her infant, and then six deaths in less than an hour. The only explanation is a gas leak or some sort of chemical agent. We need to call the police and the FBI, and we need to clear up. We right need to stay calm. I'm not abandoning the hospital without a damn good reason. For once in your life, don't be a prick, Jack. You're going to risk the entire staff so you don't look bad to the board of directors. Linda, I need you to shut up and fall in line. Attention, all staff members must evacuate the building immediately. This is not a drill. Shit. I repeat, please leave your team and exit the building immediately. Linda! Linda! Right, so uh, the, he came in with the foundation you know, of uh, it being believable and what we worked you know, over the uh, sort of next three or four takes, it was uh, more reaction, uh, more specific relationship uh, with uh, Linda and um, to, I had him uh, watch her you know, walk off. Something that is a real distinction between the kind, what I do when I'm coaching and when I'm teaching is when I'm teaching, you know, I'm basically like, Christina, what do you like? We're going to make a you choose. And Christina's always like, no, oh God, just tell me what to do. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that because, you know, I want you to be able to make your own choices. So like, what do you think this, this character is feeling? Um, and especially like this, where I'm audition coaching somebody and we've got half an hour and we want to get a take that they can send into casting. I'm like, stand here, do this. Okay. And then they walk off. Great. Do that. And 
that's often what a director will do with you. And my hope is, you know, for anybody who is training in the way that is like putting your own take on it first, that that supports you in doing your own self tapes, that supports you in taking charge of your own work on set. And then when you get a director or a coach who's like, just do it like this, you're like, oh my God, thank you. Phew. Ah, yeah, no problem. I can totally do that. Uh, another day we can talk about you know, uh, exercises for how to take notes, but back to Duke. What is it, Linda? We need to evacuate the staff immediately. What? We have two more who died in the waiting room, a healthy mother and her infant that's six deaths in less than an hour. Right, and so uh, can just, it's the facial expressions are subtle here, but can you see that he's just more engaged, you know, while uh, Linda, you know, is talking to him? You know, this, so there's more going on for Duke here. The explanation is a gas leak or some sort of chemical agent we need to call the police and the FBI. We have to stay calm. I'm not abandoning the hospital without a damn good reason. But for once in your life, don't be such a prick, Jack. You're going to risk the entire staff so you don't look bad to the board of directors. Linda, right now I need you to shut up and fall in line. Attention. All staff members must evacuate. Oh, shit. This is not a Shit. Linda. 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 Right. And then uh, I told them to uh, to just uh, you know, trim the tape for you know, uh, where when he got up, you know, so that the last thing they see is like, Argh! and he's off, you know, and so uh, much more dynamic, and we get to see sort of the action at the end there. So hopefully you can see that kind of like extra level of engagement, you know, and it, it feels like the scene is faster, you know, but I think that it actually is the same amount of time, and it's just more engaged. Uh, let's take a look at our next self-tape. This one from Natalia, who I have no idea what part of the world Natalia is in right now. I think maybe her husband moves around a lot because uh, sometimes she's like, I'm in Korea. You know, and, uh, and her backgrounds are always different. So, uh, But uh, she's been sending self-tapes really regularly over the last year. She goes out for a lot of, she has a, a Russian accent and she speaks Russian. And so she's the one who you've seen you know, do all of the like, FBI agents, you know, and you know, or uh, Russian spies, uh, and this one's a particularly fun role. Uh, it's from an ice skating, you know, TV show. It's the Russian coach, uh, and uh, they said that uh, that she's uh, Dolores Umbridge like, you know, that uh, she seems really sweet, but secretly she's evil and she wants it exactly a certain way. So check out what she did for her first take, you know, with that information, you know, and not. I'm sure that that she did you know, uh, multiple takes for this. Uh, but uh, this was her, you know, what she sent us her like uh, solid choice. So good eye light, you know, uh, medium close up, clean background, eye lines just slightly off camera. You know, so technical setup is just, is clean here. There's a moment before, it's not too long, like she stretched out a little bit maybe, but you know, that's an actor choice. You know, that's, there's gonna be personal preference on that. You know, and, she, uh, and there was a reaction, like she watched the thing happen as opposed to just starting with her line. She just watched uh, somebody fall on the ice, a uh, skater who she's helping. You do your slate. Oh, Katie? I think I've spread something. Honey. I've seen enough sprains, breaks, contusions, and concussions in my time. I know when I'm looking at a strong case of cannot be bothered. Up, Katie. Again. I can't. Everything hurts. Everything. Yes, everything. It's I didn't even know it's just... Good. Which means finally you're training properly. Another two hours, and you will be able to make the landing. Two hours, you said we were finishing at six. Well, honey, it was before you spent all your time sitting on the ice. I got stuff to do. Oh, stuff? <sighs> Very well, then. Uh, go ahead and do your stuff. And one day, a very long time from now, when you're trying to skate in between your busy job and hectic home, 
you will tell your children a story. A story of how you could become an Olympic skater. But you never quite made it. Because you had stuff to do. God, I love that transition. You know, the, right, the, um, like the sympathy that's not like it's it's clear that it is mocking sympathy um, but she I thought she found just the right note with that ah so pleasing you think it hurts now come back to me and tell me how it feels now good now again So it's a broader character, right? Like the smile, mm -hmm. she's doing some character things. She's like adjusting her hair, right? So she's bringing in some physicality you know, and some kind of uh, choices in terms of uh, the character's physical expression you know, that, uh, that might be too much if you were auditioning you know, for like a really stripped down kind of realistic network show. But it's, it's one of the reasons why understanding the style of the show that you're in is really important. You know, Natalia, if you're watching this tape, uh, the I would suggest just picking up the pace at the top. You know that uh, one of the oh, uh, Christina, you send a tape. Okay, so um, let me let me open up my email, and if I've got time, uh, Christina, you know, then we'll uh, look at it live together. I just didn't have a chance to watch it beforehand, uh, so. And to tell you, I would uh, uh, just uh, suggest uh, picking up the pace uh, a little bit at the top. You know, I think once you got into the part that like you really un uh, understood or that was like really clear for you, uh, it was really it was really alive, uh, and uh, and we really saw like the character play you a little bit. And one of the things that's really on my mind for television, particularly in the last week for some reason, is those pauses in between the lines. Because if there are these pauses in between the lines doesn't feel like a big deal to the actor, but it does break up the flow of conversation. And it's something that actors often need to do to remember things, but you can see that if I do it on purpose, it's really kind of weird. Uh, and so I would say, look for those times where you're just, yes, of course you're still playing with the punctuation, but you're just running the ideas through to the end. So that when you pause, it is because it tells something meaningful about the story. It adds to the story in some specific way. You know, and, and I think that that the reason that acting teachers and directors often give that note of like, great, just do it again, but take the air out, just pick up the pace, you know, is because that that is really a part of the convention you know, for most television, particularly. Uh, Cassie, I see your note. Uh, I'm happy to not show your tape this time. Uh, we can uh, show, but your tape is so good. Um, the, uh, what if I just don't show like the first 15 or 20 seconds? Huh? Uh, anyway, um, the, uh, because we got other tapes we can look at. So, uh, Christina's video, uh, here she is on YouTube. Um, just pulling it up and we will watch it together. Really sorry for setting in late. Like, last minute filmed it because we have a lot of marking days coming up for school. So I was really busy. Here we go. He's too tired to come down. Should I leave? Of course not. Mom, what's wrong? We spoke to the doctor today, and well, he doesn't think, he's not sure Jack will be able to go until prom. But that's like a month away. I know it's hard to hear. I only bring it up because I know my staff has been looking forward to it. Now that he and Amy are back together, and well, I was hoping we could all figure out a way to still get it back to. Christina, are you having like your your brother read or something, or is that you reading uh, in uh, like reading with a recording? That's my brother. I don't know. He sounds a lot. Hey, having a real person, you know, uh, read, you know, it's just, you, know, you uh, just stick him even further back next time, you know, because he's not a great reader, you know, and, uh, and so, you know, if, at least if you wanted it to be usable sort of outside of practice, for practice, it's perfect. You've got a real human who you're looking at, uh, which I think makes all the difference. How? We were thinking we could throw a party, a party to end all parties, birthday, graduation, prom, every party he'll ever, just all girls in each one. Before I think it's only two weeks away. What if we did it there? Yeah, and um, 
Maybe you and Amy could get the whole school to come. Christine, I love that you did this practice scene. It makes me feel like I'm uh, you know, uh, validated for the time that I spent you know, going over it last week. Uh, thank you so much for doing that practice scene for us. Uh, the Oh, I didn't even talk about the camera setup. Let's go back and look at uh, Christina's camera setup for one second. Ta-da! Um, so, uh, eye light, check. Medium close up, check. A little too much space over the head. Meh, is it a big deal? I don't think so. Um, but I would pan down you know, or tilt down uh, just a touch you know, so that we're not getting space over the head. You know, the, the other thing you can do is you can leave a little bit of extra room, not behind you, but in front of you here on the side of the person you're talking to. It's called nose room. If you just want to like really tweak that framing, right? So if I'm talking to you, then I'm doing it from here and not from here, if that makes sense. Uh, but uh, aside from uh, you know, neutral background, you know, audio is good. You're louder than your reader. You know, all things are really working for you here. And you totally fell into the trap and I warned you you would, and then you did. And you looked like you wanted to cry right from the very beginning. And so for everybody else, Christina loves to cry. She's like, she, she does these scenes and she's like, oh yeah, yes, the one where I get to cry. Oh yeah. And you know, one of these days that's gonna really work for her. She's gonna you know, get cast in the role and you're like, wow. Why is this girl just so good at scenes where she's got to cry? And then she's like, I don't know, but I love it. Yeah, more tears. And so the thing to do, remember that this character is supposed to be the moral compass, you know, of the family, and she's you know uh, the uh, you know, she her job is like to you know she's like wants to support her mom. She doesn't want to make her mom feel worse. You know, like, uh, and so crying on your mom the entire time is not going to help your objective here. Of, of course, I think it's important. It's important to have the moment of like, oh my God, like, yes, I think it's very important to have that moment somewhere in the middle, but it's like a moment and the scene's got to start with like, hey, are you okay? You know, and end with like, you're right. Like we can, we can, like, this is sad, but we're going to pull together like as family, like we always do, because I'm supposed to be the moral compass and like, making people feel good matters and family forever or like whatever it is you know, do you understand christina i read you the self tape i said it again to you next week like, no, please yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave that practice exercise up and so that's why i'm partly why i'm really happy that you taped it you know because this is last wednesday's lesson uh eve i would love to see your version of the scene we went over the script in lots of detail last wednesday it's on youtube right now uh, and uh, the script is at myfreeactingclass.com uh, for you or anybody uh, to download. You know, and Cassie, I don't know if you're looking for an extra practice scene, uh, but, uh, but this one actually is, uh, the character is written uh, for about your actual age. Uh, so uh, just quickly showing everybody where that is. If you go to myfreeactingclass.com, ta-da! Uh, and you scroll down. Ha! Ah, why do I always do that? Already in the Zoom meeting. Um, the and you scroll down uh, to here, practice script, Ali, Laura, and Clouds. You click this, it should automatically download the script for you. So easy, easy. Uh, let's see. Oh, we're at 4 30 now. So uh, Dan's tape might have to wait. Uh, but I want to uh, quickly look at uh, Natalia's uh, second and third takes for the scene. So this is a professional audition. This is something that she was doing for her agent. So obviously, she put a bunch of time into it. Um, but I think that it is relevant, right? So we saw the, like, this one, you know, the, like, I'm evil, but I'm being nice, you know, uh, version of the scene, you know, and then she also, when she submitted it, uh, sent uh, this one, extra take number two, and we'll just watch the first, you know, maybe 20 seconds. Stay. I think I sprained something. I've seen enough sprains, breaks, blisters, contusions, and concussions in my time. I know when I'm looking at a strong case of cannot be bothered. Right, and so uh, my guess is that Natalia uh, was trying to give them the version of the character that's like, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, like flat, neutral, deadpan, something. Um, you know, either that or she was focused on her accent. Either way, this version of the scene comes across uh, very flat. You know, um, not not that you don't uh, seem like a, a like a good actor here. It's just that I'm not seeing any of you in it. And so I would say that that this one probably 
that probably you did not do yourself a service by sending in that version. You know, that um, sending in an alternate version, if it's as alive, as interesting, as specific as you, you know, as your first option, great. You know, but, uh, but if you had this to do over that one, you know, uh, that is sort of like, here's the like stripped down, nothing neutral version, yeah, I would leave off. You know, they could always give you re a redirect or ask for that. Yeah, you know, and then this other one, uh, here we go. Extra take number one. Так, ну что, давайте right and so the so dynamic off the top like the uh, reaction she's seeing the girl uh, fall you know she's uh, does her first line uh, in russian something that because she speaks russian she can do really comfortably great choice like what a great idea sort of use you and and show off what you got in a way that fits the story right it's not a backflip it's like it's a russian figure skating coach she happens to speak russian like if the first line is not written in russian but no reason that you can't do that it's right so I've seen enough sprains, breaks, blisters, contusions, and concussions in my time. I know when I see a strong case of cannot be body. Yeah, and so it's subtle, Natalia, but can you hear yourself extending the vowels on some of your words and then giving those pauses in between things? And I think that if you said, I've seen enough sprains, breaks, da, 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 or contusions to know when I'm seeing a strong case of like cannot be bothered, uh, that, that then that would give us you know, like a, a different version of the scene. And so that's what I'm suggesting in terms of, of pacing, that at least you try the scene like that and, and see what's alive for you there. Okay, uh, I have more self tapes, uh, but they are, uh, it's, uh, do you remember uh, Dan, you know, who uh, we saw self tape for like the superhero guy who was like, yeah, I'm all tough. Uh, the, uh, that was maybe like a month and a half ago, he got a call back for that, you know, and so I asked him to share uh, the self tape uh, the, that he did for the callback where the side, the script is very similar, but they gave him new notes on the character. Uh, but I've still got the link for that one. That'll wait till next week, no problem. Uh, do you have questions about any of the things that I have said uh, around your self-tape or somebody else's today? Okay, a resounding silence. I hope this is because you're deep in contemplation. You're like, wow, this makes me think about life and acting and self-tapes, deep thoughts. Uh, I really said that just to make Christina laugh because I like doing that. Uh, okay, uh, thanks for showing up for the My Free Acting Class uh, lesson uh, for March the 13th. I will be back for March the 14th uh, to talk about acting with you all. And I'm going to message Taylor right now and see if she'll come talk to, uh, 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 with us about a commercial casting. Okay, bye everybody. Thank you. My pleasure.